Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the Great Millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, and this lesson is going to be entitled, The Lord Created Certain Angels to be evil for his own purposes. All right, and this lesson is inspired by a comment that I got on the comment board. Uh, another another person who doesn't quite understand uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter, which most people don't. Okay, uh, Genesis, the sixth chapter, uh, going into the sons of God, uh, uh, being with and procreating with the daughters of men. Okay, which I've done many videos on it. All right, they think that it's talking about fallen angels. Okay, that's not what it's talking about, which I've already done a video on that. Um, but uh, this time, instead of uh, touching it from the angle of who the sons of God really are, all right, which is the chosen lineage, starting off with Adam. Okay, this time I want to go into the topic of uh, certain angels being created all right, for his own purposes. Okay, certain angels were created to do evil. Okay, there's no such thing as fallen angels. Okay, the Most High did not kick uh, Satan and angels out of heaven because they were being wicked. All right, certain angels were created for that purpose, which I'm going to prove in this short video. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 7. We must first establish that the Heavenly Father is in control of both good and evil. All right, he says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. Okay, so... He's in control of good and evil. All right. He's in control of light and darkness. All these things. Okay. He does it all. You know, people think that Satan or the devil got kicked out of heaven, so to speak, because he was doing evil. Well, one, um, the spiritual demon Satan never got kicked out of heaven. Okay. That is not talking about uh, what people think it's talking about. All right. The war in heaven is really going into Esau trying to go to war with Yahweh Shine the angels when they appear. All right. But anyways, okay, let's let's uh let's just get some more scriptures because now we understand that the Heavenly Father Yahweh controls good and evil. All right. Once again, okay, he makes peace and creates evil. So when he creates evil, all right, how does he do it? He sends out evil angels. Okay, he, they were created for that purpose. All right. So why would he kick out angels for being evil when he created them to be evil? All right. Completely stupid. OK, but, you know, people, uh, they think this because of that book of Enoch, all right, which I made a video on that as well. All right, the book of e Enoch is a false book. All right. The premise of false angels and all that. That's not what Genesis, the sixth chapter is talking about. Excuse me. The premise of fallen angels. All right. That's not what Genesis six is talking about. But let's get this scripture right quick. Psalm 78 and 49. It says he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them okay so he's the one that sends out evil angels to do evil okay to execute his anger wrath indignation and cause trouble all right so they were created for this purpose let's get a few examples of this from the scriptures okay first kings chapter 22 and i'm gonna start at verse 19 all right. It says, and he said, hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. OK, so he has angels on the right hand side and on the left hand side. OK, and the host of heaven, that's, that's just another word for angels. Verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner, and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. So an evil spirit came forth and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? So how are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold. The Lord, Yahweh, hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these 
thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Okay, so then say, Satan sent forth a lying spirit or an evil spirit. It said, the Lord hath put in a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. All right, which as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get this right quick. Ezekiel 14 and 9. All right, it says, and if a prophet, if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Okay, very different. All right, you wouldn't think that the Lord would do these things, but once again, this is why we say the people, they don't really know the Lord, or right? you don't really know his true characteristics. Okay, he does both. Uh, it's not really evil, all right? It is evil because evil just means bad times, but it's righteous, all right? It's righteous judgment when he does these things, which we're going to get an example of that uh, next, okay? But this is Job 12 and 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Okay, so if you're confused, if you're deceived, okay, that's because the Lord made you that way all right he put he can put evil spirits on people if he chooses to do so and they were created for that purpose all right so he didn't kick them out of heaven because they were evil they were created to be evil and he sends them out to punish evildoers let's get an example of that and um oh excuse me first samuel the 16th chapter all right first samuel chapter 16 and um, i'm going to Kind of skip around a bit, but this is going into uh, Saul, the wicked uh, King Saul. He wanted to kill King David, okay, because he was jealous of him. So let's read about it. First Samuel 16 and 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay, and Jesse was David's father, okay. Jesse was, uh, David is the root, is the root of Jesse. Okay. He's, that's one of his uh, titles. Okay. So, um, Samuel was said, he said, um, the Lord said to Samuel to put oil in his horn and prepare to go anoint the new king. Okay. Verse two. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Okay. So, uh, Samuel was afraid of Saul. He said, if, if I go and anoint the king, a new king, right in front of Saul, Saul will kill me and most likely that person. All right. I didn't say that, but that's, I'm pretty sure that's what he was thinking. Okay. But he said he was afraid that Saul would kill him. Okay. So the Lord told him to take a heifer and say, I'm come to sacrifice to the Lord. Give him an alibi for coming by with the anointed oil and all that kind of stuff. All right. Now, that being said, let's skip down. Okay, and we're going to see, we're going to see what happened after, um, we're going to see what happened after uh, King David got anointed. Okay, Saul became jealous of him. All right, 1 Samuel 16, and um, 1 Samuel 16, and where am I, let's see, it's a lot here. Okay, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 11, and Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. All right, now listen to this, verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from the Most High troubled with thee. Okay, so why? Because Saul was wicked, and he wanted to kill, uh, he wanted to kill King David. All right, he was jealous of him. All right, which if you read 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, it tells you the same, it tells you the same thing. Okay, the evil spirit, the evil spirit from the Lord was troubling uh, Saul here in first, um, first Samuel, the nineteenth chapter. Okay, because he 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 plotted to kill King David. Okay, multiple times. All right, First Samuel, the nineteenth chapter. Let me see. Let me find it right quick. Bear with me. Uh, where is it at? Okay, boom, here it is. 1 Samuel 19 
And um, and uh, let's just start from the top. First Samuel 19 and verse 1. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. All right. But Jonathan saw, but Jonathan Saul's son delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning and abide in a secret place and hide thyself. OK, so Saul's own son gave warning to King David all right, that Saul was going to try to kill him. OK, now. Let's skip down. First Samuel 19. All right. And verse eight. And there was war again. And David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter. And they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand. And David played with his hand. All right. So uh, the evil spirit that the Lord sent was still sitting upon Saul. It was tormenting him. OK, so once again, this is all the Lord's doing. All right. We go back up. OK. First Samuel 19 and 9. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. So the Lord sent an evil spirit upon Saul because he was wicked and he was trying to kill King David, all right, because he was jealous of him because Saul knew that his rulership was coming to an end and was about to be transferred over to King David. Let's get another example of this, okay? The book of Judges, the ninth chapter, all right? And here, this is um, the story of uh, Gideon's son, okay? Gideon was a mighty warrior the Lord raised up to, to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of the Midianites, Okay, and he became a renowned man. All right, but when he <clears throat> before he perished, he had a son named Abimelech, and Abimelech was was a wicked, you know, a wicked son. He was uh, the daughter. Excuse me. He was the son of one of um, Gideon's concubines. Okay, and we'll read about what he did. Okay, this is Judges chapter nine and verse one. And Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house. Of his mother's father, all right, and that she was a she was a heathen, okay, because it said that his mother was a concubine of Gideon, okay, a, a concubine is a wife of lesser status, generally, um, generally a woman that's a heathen nation of a of a heathen nation, okay, that's the difference between a wife and a concubine in the scriptures, okay, so he was you know he's an Israelite man because the seed comes from the father, but his mother was a heathen, all right, and he was joined unto them, all right, the men of Shechem. Okay, continuing on, he said, speak, I pray you in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you, either that all the sons of Jerubbabel, which are three score and ten persons reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. So what's happening here is that Jerubbabel, that was the sons of the righteous man Gideon. Okay, and Abimelech, he was also a son of Gideon, but he was brought up, um, you know, he was, he was uh, birthed out of a heathen woman. OK, so he, he goes to the men of Shechem. All right. Which are the heathens or his, his mother's countrymen. And he says, would you rather have that these that these men rule over you or would you rather have that I rule over you? Because I am also of your flesh and blood, which technically he was an Israelite, but he was of the flesh and blood, you know, through physically through his mother's side. OK, so pretty much he was trying to overthrow their rule because uh, uh, Jerubbabel was was given. Uh, Shechem, the town of Shechem, was given to Jerubbabel because their father had, had overtaken it. Okay, so he was getting ready to overthrow all his brothers, all right, which were his half-brothers. But anyways, let's just keep reading. Okay, he said, verse 3, And his mother's brethren spake of, him in the, spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of baal Barith wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. Okay, now I'm going to skip down. All right. Actually, so like, you know, I, I keep reading verse 5, Judges 9 and 5. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being three score and ten persons upon one stone. Notwithstanding yet, Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. So this dude, Abimelech, okay, Gideon's son uh, by the concubine, he killed 70 of his brothers because it tells you in Judges the 8th chapter that uh, Gideon had multiple wives and concubines. Okay, so he had many, many children. It didn't say the exact number. All right, but this dude here, 
Okay, he had his brothers were ruling over the men of Shechem, and because he wanted the power seat, he uh, killed seventy of his brothers. He killed all the brothers of Jerubbaal, except for Jotham, the youngest one. And the only reason why he didn't kill him is because Jotham had hid. Okay, so verse six, and all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that the Most High may hearken unto you. All right, he gives them a parable. Okay, and I'm not going to read the parable. I'm going to skip down. Okay, so this is what he says. Judges 9 and 16. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabal and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands. For my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. Okay, so he's, he's saying that, he's saying, I'm, I'm going to keep reading, verse 19. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabal and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him rejoice also in you. But if ye have not, if ye did not deal uh, truly and sincerely, but if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. Okay, Abimelech. So what's happening here is, okay, Jotham, the youngest brother that escaped of the of all the brothers that Abimelech killed, he's saying, he's saying to the men of Shechem, okay, if 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 you chose him as king and and he rose to being the king in a righteous manner, then let you rejoice. But if not, okay, if you if you if he became king through wickedness and treachery, which he did, because remember he killed all he killed seventy of his brothers. All right, then let let fire come out between the men of Shechem and Abimelech and let them devour each other. OK, and that's exactly what happened as we're about to read now. OK, so it says uh, verse Judges 9 and 22, when Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then the Most High sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Jerubbabal might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. Okay, so this is the point right here. Judges 9 and 23, I'm going to read it again. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Okay, so the Lord sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem because of what they did against Abimelech's brothers, the men of Jerubbabel. You see that? All right. And what did that ha what did that cause? That caused them to kill each other, devour each other, which we're not going to read it. OK, because I just wanted to get the main point, get the context of the story of what's going on here. All right. But once again, OK, where did the evil spirit come from? OK, it came from the Lord. So he sends out evil spirits. OK, to punish people. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. Proverbs 13 and 21. And we'll get ready to close out in a minute. It says, evil pursue with sinners, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Okay. So evil pursueth sinners, which both, both Saul and Abimelech were wicked. So what happened? Evil pursued them and slayed them, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. Now, how did the Lord uh, uh, send those punishments? He sent out evil spirits. That's the whole purpose. And that's what people don't get, man. Okay. People don't understand when we when we tell you that when we t when we see somebody get judged by the Lord, we know exactly what it is. OK, that person was wicked and the Lord sent out an evil spirit against them. You think that we're crazy for saying that oh, God wouldn't do that. Well, we just read it. I just gave you uh, uh, two examples of the Lord punishing wicked men of, of Israel. All right. By sending out evil spirits against them. Proverbs 28 and five evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. OK. So it's the judgment of the Lord. He's the one that sends out these evil spirits, okay, against wicked doers. <clears throat> Excuse me. My throat's dry. Against wicked doers of Israel. 
Okay, let's go ahead and get this right quick. So Rock chapter 39 and verse 28. Okay, it says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Their spirit, he created certain spirits to be evil for vengeance. Okay, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell, famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. The Lord sends out evil spirits to punish people with these different things. Okay. Teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, serpents, and a sword punishing the wicked to destruction. The sword is any way of being put to death unnaturally. Okay. It says, look at this, verse 31. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. Why? Because they were created to do evil. They are created for this purpose. All right. See that? Okay, so it's, it's really simple, you know. But once again, you have to do deep study to truly learn the characteristics of the Lord. And we'll close out with this. Okay, angels don't disobey the Lord. Okay, so they shall rejoice in his commandment. And shall be ready upon earth when need is. Okay, so when he when he sends out that that order, all right, like a hitman. Okay, he sends out those evil angels. Those are his executioners, and they, it said they rejoice at his commandment. Okay, this is Psalms 103 and verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Okay, so once again, and we also read that First uh, Kings 22. So I think verse 19. All right, that the Lord has angels on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, okay? Verse 21, it says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. See that? Okay, and once again, it appeases the wrath of him that made them. We just read that in Sirach, the 39th chapter, okay? Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Yahweh, O my soul. Okay, but we see right here, okay, that the angels, they do his commandments. It's in verse 20. In verse 21, bless ye the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Okay. So that when they, even when they kill, when they maim, all right, that's because Yahweh Basham Yahushai ordered and directed them to do so. They were created specifically for that purpose as punishment against the wicked. All right. So anyways, I hope that was edifying. As always, I want to give out praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai. Mahashimra Kakwadash, and until next time, Shalom.